my name is Kara Servany. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an, a biology faculty member. My lab studies visual system development. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Pitts. I am a professor in the psychology department and also teach courses in neuroscience. Uh, my lab studies uh, things like perception and attention and consciousness. Um, and we use non-invasive brain recordings and, and psychophysics and other fun uh, tools like eye tracking. I'm going to try to talk about the biology side of, of neuroscience and Michael will talk a little bit more about the psychology side. I just want to emphasize that this is one of the interdisciplinary majors at Reed. So you're doing coursework in both biology and psychology and then um, an interesting thesis project in one of those disciplines, but that has a neuroscience focus. So I also like to say that neuroscience is a really broad tent kind of field, which means that um, there are at the Society for Neuroscience meeting, there are people who are really down in the weeds at the cellular level of what's happening in neurons, all the way up to um, behaviors and um, more sorts of experiments about humans. So neuroscience at Reed is an interdisciplinary program. Um, there have research opportunities in the faculty labs, and you're going to be taking really exciting coursework um, all the way from things like neurophysiology and animal behavior to neural development, neuropharmacology, cognition, and learning. There are four contributing faculty members, both four from biology and four from psychology, and um, Susie Wren, Eric Zornick, uh, Derek Applewhite, and I are all sort of members of the, the neuroscience committee. Other faculty members, especially Sarah and Janice, who teach courses in genetics, um, also in some ways contribute to the major, but aren't um, sort of official neuroscience folks and their research isn't really neuroscience. My lab studies visual system development and growth, uh, mostly in zebrafish. And I'm really interested in understanding the transition from proliferation to differentiation. We have almost every microscope uh, imaginable here. So we have a laser scanning confocal microscope, we have a, a turf microscope, which is a total internal reflection fluorescence microscope. Um, we're getting a light sheet microscope that's going to be installed this summer. So we're big into imaging in our department. And then Michael's gonna talk about psychology. All right, thanks, Kara. So just a quick introduction here. Um, there are four of us in psychology who uh, primarily do research in the neurosciences. Um, and we range from studying uh, animal models. So Paul, who's on the left there, and Tim, who's uh, in the back, um, study uh, rat models and um, pigeon models. And then you can see me there uh, in between the two and, and Enriqueta. Um, we share a lab space and Enriqueta and I um, study human uh, cognition, uh, sensation, perception, language, attention, topics like that. So there's lots of other courses in psychology that uh, even though they might not focus heavily on, on the brain and systems in the brain, you can bring a lot of that to your study of neuroscience. So for example, developmental, uh, social, um, clinical, um, all of these other areas can be approached from a neuroscience perspective. Could you... Um talk a little bit about how you help students decide maybe whether they want to do just psychology or just biology or whether neuroscience is right for them. Um, what, like, what, what does that sort of decision-making look like? So what I usually advise incoming students, if you're, if you're not sure, you can set yourself up in the first year to have lots of different options. Uh, so you don't have to decide in the first year. I would actually recommend staying undecided for a little bit until you see what these courses are like and see what these research areas are like. You may, your interest may change once you get more exposure. Um, I think the biggest thing is to look over the list of required courses for the neuroscience major. And if most of these courses are topics you're interested in anyway, this might be a good major for you. If you know only a, a quarter of the courses are of interest to you, you can have a little more freedom if you pursue a biology major or a psychology major separately, because the neuroscience major does have quite a few, quite a high credit requirement. If you think you're interested in neuroscience, I think starting out thinking you're interested in neuroscience and taking the intro level psychology course and intro level biology course the first year that you're here is really helpful because I think it can help clarify um, 
whether or not you're on those, which, which trajectory you're on. But that's not to say that you can't start the neuroscience major a little bit later. So I, I know there are students who started out as biology majors who then um, kind of happened to take psychology and said, wow, actually, I think I want to be a neuroscience major. And so I, I've seen people start really um, when they're sophomores decide that they want to do the neuroscience major. How easy slash how early can you start getting involved in research at Reed, you know, prior to thesis? And um, how often or do, how often do students get their names published in academic papers? I would say that I have students who start working with me the summer after their first year here at Reed. Um, that's not the norm, but I think that's it's certainly possible. Um, and the summer research program here is very robust, as Michael can attest. We've, we all have, um, there are a number of us who have multiple students in our labs during the summer, and that's really kind of the intense research time. Yeah, and then also I wanted to mention that in a lot of the coursework, especially in biology, but in other disciplines too, we integrate ongoing research from our own labs into our, our classes. And so you may be taking developmental biology and actually participating in ongoing research in my own lab about visual system development or some of the, you know, looking at particular genes and how they're regulated during uh, visual system development as part of the lab component of the course. In some of my classes, we have students read the literature, learn how to record brain waves, and then come up with a proposal for an experiment. You know, that's, that's a typical class uh, lab project. So that's a, that's a good start. And then, yes, I've had, um, it's, it's less common, but this summer, for example, I have a first year student that has a fully funded grant in my lab for summer research. And it's happened in the past. So I think um, more common would be after the summer after your second uh, year. Also, of course, you know, laboratory classes, uh, we hire research assistants during the academic year. Um, and then, of course, the thesis is uh, you get two units of credit uh, for doing research. So there's a lot of research built in. Um, and then I guess the last part of the question was how often do students get to publish? Um, it's fairly common to, um, to have some publications come out of your, your work at, at Reed, especially if you're doing um, summer research and, and uh, thesis work. A couple of people are asking about like, is it hard to get a research position and is it different to get a research job if you're an international student versus domestic student? I know for the Reed, uh, the Reed funded positions, it, you can be an international student, domestic student, there's no, no difference. I think for some of the external funds, there is a US citizen requirement. We love to talk about our research. We love to do our research. So if you're interested in it and you wanna be part of it, we'll find a way for that to happen. Neuroscience is already an interdisciplinary major, but um, how have you seen students make it even more interdisciplinary? I, I think the, my biggest piece of advice there is you can take all of these classes and use all of, all, all of the skills and, and concepts you're learning in these different disciplines, but be really careful about sort of what you, what you set yourself up for in terms of credits required. There is a student right now that I know about who's doing a, a CS neuroscience interdisciplinary major. And I would give you the same advice that Michael is just giving. I think that um, set yourself up in the beginning, your first year to kind of sample some courses and figure out which one of those paths might be better. Um, it's just, I, I see my current thesis student who's this kind of straddling both fields and um, it's, it's really tough. Biology and psychology are are really close to each other, just physically, in terms of the way the campus is organized. And um, and I think because students are in our both of our classes, um, we, we kind of build camaraderie that way. Um, I think at the departmental level, so we don't have a neuroscience department, but we have biology and psychology departments. And so the department level, we do, a, with COVID, it's been a little bit more challenging to do some of these things. Um, but we do have a weekly seminar series where students um, get to interact with each other, but also with um, uh, the invited speaker who tends to be someone from off Reed campus, so an extramural speaker. Um, we also, we start those meetings with trivia contests. So just fun, like um, biology trivia. We have lots of events um, in terms of faculty sponsored events where um, we do things like 
softball or baseball or croquet. That was a big one because of COVID. You can play that without being too close to each other. Um, yeah, so things like that. I think there's a lot of emphasis built into the, the sort of welcoming you into the major once you've decided if you're a biology or neuroscience or psychology major. Um, I know psychology, Michael, you can talk about the retreat that you guys do because that's a really big team building kind of thing. If you're a neuroscience major, you are welcome in either of the two departments, you know, to be part of those both communities. We do a few neuroscience specific things uh, to, to build some community there. Um, but yeah, in psychology, before before COVID hit, we would do a once a, once a year um, trip uh, to somewhere in the mountains in, uh, you know, an hour or so from, from Portland and spend a day with 30 students and all the faculty and do fun stuff, do intellectual stuff, do um, all sorts of kind of uh, community building things. Um, and that's called the Squire Retreat, uh, funded by a, a former professor in the department. Could you talk a little bit about um, what different career paths um, your past students have, have pursued? And is it common that it leads to med school? It's really split. I, I'm kind of just was going through my mind of the my thesis students particularly, but other students also that I knew in the department. And I would say that probably a quarter of those students have gone on to med school or grad school, um, maybe a little, a few more into grad school as opposed to med school, but pretty equal split. Um, and then there are students who've done all kinds of really interesting things. Like I know someone who is a landscape architect now. I know another person who, um, actually two students who've gone on to be um, doctors of physical therapy. There are people who have gone on to um, actually work in more sort of communications and um, sort of science, science writing uh, careers. So, so yes, I think maybe the dominant um, career path is that of researcher and or scientist and or medical scientist, but I don't think by any stretch of the imagination, that's the only thing. My main advice there is, you know, keep an open mind because uh, you may, you may have a strong idea of what you want your career to be now, but you're going to know a lot more, you know, in four or five years. And you may not, you may, there may be careers you don't even know exist that, um, you know, in my field, there's lots, there's lots of industry jobs now. So, you know, neurotechnology sort of things, um, tons of companies out there trying to have take home EEGs that you can, you know, monitor your own sleep and induce lucid dreams and play video games with your mind. And <laughs> I think, I think we're in a, an age where we're going to, yeah, see a lot of kind of uh, outside of academics um, career paths show up that, that a neuroscience background can, can really benefit. So one thing I would say about the difference between being at a large research heavy institution versus being at a small research institution like Reed, um, which is that at many institutions, people will tell you, you can do research and that you can be involved in it. At Reed, I like to say that you will be involved in it and you will do research as part of your biology or your neuroscience or your psychology degree, any of those, you will do research. And that's, that I think is a big difference. And that's one of the things that I think makes Reed special. When you're learning to do research, you actually will do your own research projects. You will uh, be supervised directly by faculty instead of graduate students and postdocs, um, and you hardly ever see the, the primary investigator in, in given labs. At Reed, you're actually gonna be part of designing and, um, and acquiring all of the data and doing the analysis and writing everything up and, and doing the full, uh, the full scope of, of research.